Good morning. Let us uh, let us look at the book of Matthew, chapter nine, verse thirty five to thirty eight. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to the disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Amen. So here then, uh, we can see what did Jesus do uh, while he was uh, in this earth. And while he was doing uh, the, his public ministry, what was his uh, main work? Here then, um, verse 35, it says that uh, he was going throughout all the cities and villages and he was teaching. Yeah, first thing was the teaching in the synagogues and then the second one was proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom then the third one was healing every disease and every affliction. Yeah. So Matthew was uh, writing uh, these three things. So in this uh, uh, verse, then uh, uh, God is guiding us what we also should do. Uh, it is teaching us uh, as a disciples of Jesus uh, we, what we should do. The th three things are uh, the teaching, yeah, we, we need to teach the people, and then proclaiming the kingdom of God, and healing. And then what was the heart of Jesus? When he saw the crowds who are following, then Jesus had that compassion, the love, and then he had that pitiful heart, because they don't have the shepherd. So, to do this uh, work, then uh, he had that great compassion and love. So this time, uh, Jesus also said to the disciples that uh, there are a lot of people ready uh, to be ha to be uh, harvested. So you need to pray, and then uh, so that. God can send, send you the, uh, the workers of the kingdom of God. So this time is a time of a harvest, right? Um, so uh, we need to work for this uh, work of harvest. Yeah. So yesterday when I was um, outside, then I was just thinking about uh, uh, what kind of uh, heart and attitude uh, I must have. So, um, I, I just remembered this verse, and also another one was uh, uh, Apostle Paul, his life of uh, evangelism. Uh, so, let us look at the book of Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19. 1 Corinthians. Chapter 9, verse 19, I read 19 up to 27, for though I am free 
I am free from all. I have made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became as a Jew, in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being, out, not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those out, outside the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means, I might save some. I do it all for the sake of the gospel, that I might I may share with them in its blessings. Do you not know that in a race all the runners run, but only one receives the prize? So run that you may obtain it. Every athlete exercises self control in all things. They do it to receive a perishable bread, but we an imperishable. So I do not run aimlessly. I do not box as one beating the air, but I discipline my body and keep it under control, lest after preaching to others, I myself should be disqualified. Mm. So here then we can really learn, learn, learn a lot of things about the attitude of a, a person for his life. So his life was like uh, running toward the goal. So if we don't know the direction of life, then we will wonder a lot. A lot. So when I was young, then I used to uh, dream many things. At the time, I, I I didn't have faith. I didn't have really real faith. But then, so I was seeking what should be my aim or my direction. And then I I could see uh, I can do this, I can do that. But then, what is what is the, what is the meaning? <laughs> I can do maybe I can achieve something. But then, what is the meaning? What is the real, like, the, uh, really, I can get through it? I couldn't really find it. So, my life, I felt that it is really uh, meaningless. Uh, even though I can be top of maybe academic things, but then, what? What is that? <laughs> no, there is no meaning. If, uh, I don't know. So, but then if we know the direction, uh, it will be better. And then Apostle Paul, not only direction, he had a very clear goal. He had a very clear aim, which he must follow. He was very clear in it. What is it? It is Christ. He was uh, running toward, the, toward the Christ. Okay. He wanted to resemble him. He wants to live like him so that he can achieve uh, the resurrection and he can achieve the true eternal life and the reward. So his life was really fixed toward that goal. So he said that I, I am free man, I am free. Man. No one is forcing me something. I, I have every freedom through Jesus Christ. Yeah. But then I made myself as a servant or a slave to all the people. So with that freedom, I selected to live this life. Yeah. And then he had a great joy through it. Yeah. It is not like by force, but then he was with his will. He left everything. And then he followed this life. So 
He followed Jesus. As Jesus said to the disciples, follow me. It should be all the Christians. It's not like uh, some people who live this some kind of uh, lifestyle and follow Jesus. But even though we are all different, but then Jesus is the goal for all of our lives. Fundamental goal to the common Christians, we should follow the life of Jesus. And then we can follow him as he showed us his life. Right? So people can follow someone as others show the life. It is, we can say, role model or media. We can say media. So by looking at it, we know and we can follow. We can resemble. Right? So we, um, if we want to also uh, make disciples, or we can yeah, guide people, then we need to show our life. Right? If we cannot show something uh, to the uh, good example, then people will just follow us as we do. So the true message of life is through, uh, the true teaching is coming through the life. Okay? So teaching is good, but then if we cannot show through our life, then this teaching cannot be very powerful teaching. Okay? But then Jesus, he showed through his life. Then, then how about Jesus? How he could know? How, could, how he could learn? From whom he could learn? Okay. Jesus looked at Father. Okay. So let us read John chapter 5, verse 19. The book of John chapter 5. Verse 19, he says that, So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. So uh, Jesus said that uh, the Son can do only what he sees from the Father. So Jesus saw Father's doing, what Father's doing, then he could learn and then he could do it. Jesus was not just living alone. Always he was looking what Father is doing, and then that's how he did also, following the Father. So what did Jesus saw? What he saw this uh, how God was uh, doing in the history, what he did in the uh, in the history, but how he was suffering uh, to guide the people uh, in the great sinners in the world, how God tried to guide them, how to save them, uh, that kind of pain and suffering. Uh, that effort Jesus could see. And then he was following God. So as he saw that, as many maybe prophets, as many the people of God were suffering and killed, then God was there in the middle of their sufferings. And God had that pain. And then God tried to guide the people even though they were going toward the great simple life, but continually God was calling them. Jesus could know. And then that's how he also could follow that way. And then that's how also Apostle Paul, he wanted to also follow the life of Jesus. As he looked at, as he could see, he could know how Jesus suffered, and then how he could die on the cross, then Apostle Paul wanted to also follow the way of Jesus. Yeah. 
So we are also the ones who are trying to follow Jesus and also pastor's life, right? Yeah. So we are following that their footstep. So how is God? God is also has all the freedom, right? More than us. He has all the freedom. He is almighty God. He is eternal God. He doesn't have any limitation. But then, why he came to this world? Why he wanted to um, have that relationship with man who has very limit, limit yeah? who is really yeah, unable to do many things. But then God wanted to uh, relate him with us. And then, for it, then he lowered himself. You know, as God to be friend with us. Is it really, uh, is it really easy? Actually, it is a great lower, uh, lowerness. Yeah. And then, Jesus came down to this world. Even though he could sit down at the high position, yeah, at the throne. And then, he could enjoy he could just enjoy that glory. But then he came down, he lowered himself, and then he became like slave. He became like a servant. He limited himself, and then he was killed like a sinner. So um, we believe God who was revealed through Jesus Christ. What kind of God he is? Which, which was revealed through Jesus, it is the God of love. Even though he could, uh, he could just leave us alone, as we were fallen, as we were went astray, we were against God. But then, so he could just leave us alone. We were a great enemy of God. But then, he wanted to save us. He wanted to be united with us. He, want to, he wanted to be dwelling in us. And then he wanted to make the beautiful world of love with us. That's why he lowered himself. Jesus, he lowered himself and then he denied himself. He did not follow his desire. He did not follow um, Maybe his maybe his dream to be in this world, or he did not really grab his freedom to be as a glorious son of God. But then he lowered to the sinners, up to the sinners, and then uh, he wanted to save them, and he wanted to make the beautiful relationship of love, and then he wanted to connect us with God. Yeah. So he is a humble king, but he was um, the image of servant, servant of love. So he uh, he gave up his freedom and then he became a like a servant. So as God went that way first, and then the son also went the way. Even though he could just leave us alone, he came. And then uh, uh, he, he continually found us. Yeah. So let us continue with uh, verse 10, 20. Um, to the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. Um, that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law, I became as one outside the law, not being outside the, the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might win those outside of the law. To the weak, I became weak, I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people, that by all means I might save them. So there is that uh, in the education that uh, the kind of uh, uh, theory that we need to make the same level. Yeah. <laughs> we need to, the teacher should uh, 
uh, be like the level of children so that uh, they can teach the children at the same level. If the, uh, it's too much high, then they cannot understand. So, okay. with that uh, loving heart, um, we can, uh, he, like Jesus came down uh, as a man. Also, we can go down to the people uh, who are very different, who are, uh, who are uh, more like the sinners, like who don't understand God. Okay. So as we are using the same language, then uh, we can understand each other. Then what is the fundamental goal? It is to gain one more soul. It was his, his great, uh, his aim, his goal, to gain one more soul. That's how he became everything. <laughs> he went to everyone, even Gentiles, even ugly sinners, even yeah, different people, uh, he went. So uh, as the, in the book of Romans chapter 10, it says that, how beautiful is the feet of the, the preachers. The one who is going to the far away, far place, to share the gospel. That it is very beautiful. Why? Uh, not just being at the place, uh, comfortably enjoying the relationship of love with God, but then who going to the far place, the rough place, the new place, to share this Oh, beautiful gospel because uh, God wanted to have that beautiful relationship of love with the people in this world so that he sends the people to the farthest land so Jesus was like that he, could, he didn't really enjoy the glory but then he came down to the simple world and then even though I can die but then if I can save the other people, and then if they can also enjoy the eternal life with me, then I can die. That is the heart of Jesus. Yeah. So uh, that is how also we uh, we are. Um, uh, that's how we are here through Jesus Christ, His suffering. Yeah. So uh, let us look at uh, Psalm chapter one twenty six. One twenty six, verse five to six. Those who sow in tears shall reap with a shout of joy. He who goes out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with a shout of joy. Bring uh, his bringing his shapes with him. Those who sow the, who sow the seeds in tears shall reap with a shout of joy. Yeah. So sowing the seed always have a lot of effort and pain and tears. Yeah. But then we can say that uh, in, the, in the harvest, the harvest of the soul, uh, this sowing the seed is the love. So love is not something, just a concept. Yeah. We cannot just say love with our mouth. But then it should have that uh, effort and suffering and pain. Yeah. So love is more practical and realistic things. And it needs a lot of energy and pain. Yeah. In, on the cross, there was a lot of pain and a lot of crying and tears. But then when there was this love, then there could be also resurrection in the life. So through the cross, uh, we could see that God is love. We could realize that God is really God is love. Through the Christ of Jesus, then this was very clearly revealed. So that through the Christ, 
the cross then we could have the eternal life. So when there is this love and a great effort of love, then there is also a shout of joy in harvest. So without this love, then there is no uh, no fruit. So I hope we we can go the way of the master, uh, which Jesus went first, and there was a passage they went following Jesus. And so we also want to uh, follow this way of Jesus and a passage, so that we can uh, see the great harvest and we can enjoy it with joy. And yeah, let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this time and thank you for your word. Uh, you could see uh, how Jesus walked the way of uh, the cross and the life of uh, evangelism and teaching and healing uh, with the heart of love, uh, knowing uh, the great uh, love of Father and also Apostle Paul, uh, Apostles, they were also following the way of Jesus with this heart of love. Father God, uh, we want to also uh, follow this way and we don't want to uh, go astray and wandering uh, around this world uh, doing something uh, meaningless things and beating the air but then we want to go straight, straightly looking at the goal so that we can be uh, we can be the true uh, disciples and, uh, we can uh, make the beautiful kingdom through our lives Lord please be with us and please uh, continually hide our ways and teach us so that we can uh, be the uh, the disciples, the true disciples of Jesus, uh, the worker, workers of your kingdom. Uh, so please be with us and guide us. And we thank you in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.